The great push is over, and at this point, it's safe to assume nobody is happy with how stale the Mythic Plus meta truly is right now. But don't worry, Blizzard are here to shake things up with yet another round of hotfixes aimed towards the so-called God Comp. Will Fire Mages finally be extinguished? Are Guardian Druids going to be sent back into hibernation? And will Shadow Priests still be needed after the dungeon changes? We've got all this and much more to cover as we bring you an up-to-date look at the 10.1.5 Mythic Plus tier list, thanks to the help of our esteemed Echo and Method consultants and analyzing the most recent data. To begin, let's dive straight in with the tank updates. Guardian Druids have been at the top of the food chain since the reworks to their talent tree coming with 10.1.5, where the spec was made a lot more diverse, improving on their AoE and single target damage, as well as their survivability. Well, since then we've had a fair bit of tuning happen. Even back before the Great Push happened, we saw an 8% damage reduction to their two primary AoE abilities in Raze and Thrash. All in the hopes of bringing their damage slightly more in line with other tanks, which was definitely noticeable, but even then Guardian Druid just excelled in every other aspect as well. As a result, we're now seeing even more hotfixes released on August 22nd, this time aimed at targeting some of Guardian's survivability. With a 5% nerf to the Absorb gained by Ursoc's Fury on top of a 30% nerf to the Innate Resolve talent. It seems like Blizzard's approach with balancing the season is to opt for more consistent minor adjustments rather than just completely obliterating a spec. And that's what we're seeing here, as the change to Ursoc's Fury will essentially be a non-factor. The change to Innate Resolve, on the other hand, is slightly more impactful, hurting Guardian Druid's self-sustain a decent chunk. But realistically, the end result of these nerfs is that Guardian Druid will simply need slightly more targeted healing inside of keys than they did previously. Will they still be the go-to tank? Yes. Are they now slightly more in line? That's still debatable. But for now, we'll be keeping them well and truly inside of our S tier. One tank on the rise over the past few weeks has been Protection Warrior, who first received a boost to their AoE damage with buffs to both major cooldowns Ravager and Thunderous Roar, which equated to a very minor damage increase that definitely helps towards making them a more meta option. August 22nd had even more buffs, starting with a 5% buff to the damage you deal while in defensive stance, a 5% buff to the damage reduction from Spell Reflection, as well as a buff to Vanguard, increasing stamina by 35% rather than 30 Overall, these are again steps in the right direction and good changes for one of the lesser represented tanks out there, giving Protection Warrior slightly more overall survivability, as well as some additional help against magic damage. But the highlight here is definitely the change to Defensive Stance. To clarify for those of you who may be confused with this change, Defensive Stance when swapped to would previously reduce damage taken by 20%, with the drawback of reducing your damage dealt by 10%. Now this reduction on your damage dealt is instead only 5%. Previously, Protection Warriors would only ever switch to Defensive Stance when it was absolutely required. Now though, swapping into Defensive Stance or even just sitting inside of it will be far less punishing, as the trade-off is negligible. For this reason, we'll be bumping up Protection Warrior up one tier, moving from B to A. Taking a look at our consolidated tank tier list, Guardian Druid will of course still be remaining in our top spot for yet another week. Vengeance Demon Hunter continues to be slightly ahead of the rest of the pack, taking that a spot, providing a decent alternative to Guardian Druid. Protection Paladin remains to be a great carry option and viable pickup for lower rated players thanks to their abundance of interrupts and utility, but with Holy Paladin still being the go-to healer, having ended up losing a lot of their value. In our bottom tier, Blood Death Knights and Brewmaster Monks are still slightly behind the rest of the tanks, but while they might not be all that highly represented in the absolute peak of key levels, both still provide viable tanking alternatives. Next up, we're taking a trip to the Graveyard of Mythic Plus, also known as Melee Specs. Since our last update, Retribution Paladin has seen the most impactful buffs, receiving damage increases to Divine Storm, Wake of Ashes, and Consecration, which as a result increased AoE damage by around 3-4%, while single target increased by a very minor figure of around 1%. Now obviously, these changes were not enough to propel Ret to the forefront of the meta, but that's just going to be the case for a lot of specs when the god comp is so dominant. But nudges in the right direction like we see here, coupled with consistent nerfs to the overperforming specs, has the potential of making specs like Rhett a lot more viable, especially if we see Holy Paladin fall out of the limelight. For now though, despite these changes, we'll be keeping Retribution inside of our A plus tier. Also getting some love since our last update was Fury Warrior, who received buffs to both Ravager and Thunderous Roar, as well as a nice percent increase to Improved Whirlwind. By improving AoE damage, Blizzard are once again making steps in the right direction to make the specs slightly more viable inside of Mythic Plus, 
But much like Retribution Paladin, or, well, all melee for that matter, is with the current strength of the meta specs, there just isn't a spot for Fury Warrior at the peak of keys, despite offering some very competitive damage. So for now, we'll be keeping them inside of our A plus tier. Another melee spec that we saw get some much needed tuning was Unholy Death Knight. Unholy has been almost non-existent in the Mythic Plus scene for a long while, and an 8% damage increase to Epidemic and 12% damage increase to Bursting Sores has undoubtedly made their AoE a lot more effective. There's just one issue, this won't make them viable. The spec itself just, quite honestly, needs a talent tree redesign. If you spec for AoE, you do no single target. If you spec for single target, you do no AoE. And as we know, in Mythic Plus, if you want to compete for a spot, you need to be able to perform in all scenarios. For this reason, we don't see Unholy Death Knight climbing out of our lowest tier anytime soon, and will remain inside of our C tier. Speaking of our lowest tier, following the theme of underrepresented specs getting some love, Blizzard remembered that Assassination actually exists as a spec. Providing Assassination players this past reset with a blanket 5% increase to all damage, as well as a 5% increase to auto attack damage on top. Now, let's be real, you don't need me to tell you that this won't change anything. Assassination, out of the three rogue specs, just isn't made for Mythic Plus and will continue to be the weakest out of the three. And with that, we have our melee updates accounted for. Taking a look at the tier list, coming as a shock to no one, we're not seeing any movement. Although some specs have been buffed, we've yet to see the impactful nerfs required to tone down the dominant meta range specs. Out of the melee specs, currently the one with the most potential is still of course Subtlety Rogue, and they will remain in our S tier. Enhance, Fury, and Retribution all still continue to be very strong options and more than viable specs if you disregard the god comp. Enhancement especially, who since their last round of changes have become even stronger with a lot of their single target damage issues now being resolved. Not to mention the buffs to Lava Lash have made them absolute monsters when it comes to any sort of funnel related damage. Taking a look at our A tier, Outlaw has been gaining some slight traction as a decent alternative to Subtlety Rogue, after netting multiple damage increases, on top of the recent redesign to the grand melee buff portion of Roll the Bones. But overall, a sad couple weeks for melee players all around. With that covered, let's jump into our range specs, where we have a multitude of nerfs targeted towards the three meta range specs. Starting off, we've got Augmentation Evoker, who since our last update have somehow only really received two small changes, a 5% nerf to Breath of Eons and a 5% nerf to the talent Fate Mirror, reducing the damage or healing of the proc provided by Prescience, which equated to around a 4% overall nerf. But here's the issue, no matter how many numbered tunings Augmentation's Evoker receives, as long as it remains in its current state, it will always be mandatory for pushing high keys. Now, yes, while meta specs have always existed, Augmentation Evoker introduced a new role. A role so powerful not just for its damage, but for all of the utility, healing, and general support it brings. Meaning, unless Augmentation Evoker gets completely gutted, or we see a new support spec being released, or maybe even potentially a current spec being pushed into a support-based role, Augmentation Evoker will continue to be mandatory. And it goes without saying, they'll be remaining in our highest tier. But we want to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on Augmentation Evoker, and how would you balance it? Let us know in the comments below. Another spec being rightfully targeted is Fire Mage, who have received back-to-back -back nerfs on essentially the same abilities. A few weeks back, we saw 10% nerfs across the board to practically all Fire Mage AoE spells. This was incredibly warranted, but didn't exactly achieve all that much, as Fire Mages continue to be head and shoulders above the rest of the ranged DPS specs. However, on August 22nd, we saw a second round of tuning, again targeting a lot of the same spells, with 8% reductions to Flame Strike, the Flame Patch left behind, as well as a nerf to both the passive damage of Conflagration and rate at which Incendiary Flames can proc. For those of you confused about the last change, it's referring to the Incendiary Eruption talent and its internal cooldown. This second round of tuning equated to a further 6% AoE nerf and less than 1% single target nerf, give or take. The question is, will it be enough to dislodge Fire Mage out of the god comp? Well, out of the five dominant meta specs, Fire Mage is now without a doubt the most replaceable, especially by specs like Enhancement and Subtlety, potentially even Frost Mage. The issue with replacing the Fire Mage though, is that the god comp, regardless of damage numbers, has way too much synergy between the specs. Fire Mage brings much needed AoE CC, Arcane Intellect, Mass Invis, or Mass Barriers, as well as posing as the perfect power infusion target. That then also happens to pair up with augmentation damage increases perfectly, not to mention Blessing of Summer. So while we may potentially end up with top players exploring alternatives to Fire Mage, it will more than likely continue to be heavily represented at the top until we see further tuning. So for this reason, we'll be keeping it inside of our S tier. 
Up next, to complete the trio of overperforming range specs, we've got Shadow Priest, who since our last update received even more damage tuning. This time aimed towards Vampiric Touch, Shadow Word Pain, and Shadowy Apparitions, which ended up equating to somewhere around 3% on single target and 8% on AoE. The issue with Shadow Priest though is that much like Augmentation Evoker, it's become practically mandatory across most dungeons, in large part due to the importance of Mass Dispel and Mind Soothe. Surprisingly enough, Blizzard have recognized this and with the 22nd of August hotfixes, rather than any further damage nerfs, which would just end up obliterating the spec in Raid as well as Mythic Plus. Instead, what we're seeing happen is that certain mechanics are being toned down in the attempt to reduce the importance of Mass Dispel. Now, don't get us wrong, this is a great solution and a big stride in the right direction, but the execution isn't exactly perfect, as there still continues to be plenty of bosses, trash, or even affixes where playing without a Shadow Priest just still isn't possible at the highest of key levels. For instance, Chrono Lord Deus, Emberon, or even Watcher Iridius. So, for now, Shadow Priest and the God Comp as a whole will all still be remaining inside of our S tier. Taking a look at our consolidated range tier list, the top remains exactly the same after yet another round of tuning. Frost Mage maintains a slight lead over the other options and might emerge as a significantly more competitive alternative to Fire Mage if players are open to exploring different avenues. As for A tier, we've still got Balanced Druid and Devastation Evoker. Oh, and yes, Devastation Evoker, to everybody's surprise, is still actually a spec that exists in WoW, despite what you may see. Standalone, they're very competitive damage-wise, but granted, with Augmentation Evoker existing, there's sadly not much chance of ever seeing them represented at the highest of key levels right now. So although they're in A tier, realistically, it's going to feel a lot lower. Two specs moving up this update are Destruction Warlock and Beast Mastery Hunter. We feel both specs, despite receiving no recent buffs, have just been performing far better than our initial placement may have suggested. Finally, to bring this update to a close, we've got Healers. Holy Paladins have of course been the healer getting the most attention over the past few weeks, and rightfully so. In the first round of tuning, we saw a combination of healing and survivability nerfs, coming from a flat 5% healing reduction across the board, nerfs to the damage reduction provided by Glimmer thanks to the Talent Light's protection, a reduction to the Absorb Shield from Overflowing Light, nerfs to the buff portion of Tears Deliverance to reduce the bonus healing to Holy Light, Flash of Light, and Holy Shock, as well as 7% less Absorbs provided by Fading Light. On top of that, Consecration now has a 20% less chance of proccing from Righteous Judgment, as well as also dealing 25% reduced damage overall. As it's been a couple of weeks since these changes went live, you don't need us to tell you that they didn't accomplish much. But on August 22nd, we saw a second round of nerfs, this time purely aimed at damage, with a 10% decrease to all damage abilities, along with another nerf to Blessing of Summer. So what impact is this going to have? Well, even before these changes, Paladin was by no means the highest DPS healer, but when compared to the other healers, the bulk of Holy Paladin's damage all comes passively via their standard healing pattern. Unlike healers like Restoration Shaman or Preservation of Ochre who have to sacrifice healing for damage and vice versa. Not to mention the bulk of what makes Paladin so strong is its high throughput and strong cooldowns, coupled with its utility, as having both an interrupt and single target stun coming from your healer is a crucial part of what makes the meta comp so strong right now. So despite these nerfs seeming fairly drastic, we'll be keeping Holy Paladin inside of our S tier for now. The other healer getting a few changes this round of hotfixes is Mistweaver Monk. This time though, it's buffs, including a 15% healing increase to Ancient Teachings, which is the talent that makes fist weaving possible, a buff to Yulon's Grace to help with some survivability issues, and some minor changes to the Celestial Harmony talent, shifting some of the healing away from the breath to instead be on the Chi Cocoons when activating your Chi Ji or Yulan, which despite a hefty 100% increase still results in a very negligible change, meaning overall Mistweaver is looking stronger, boasting much higher consistent throughput coupled with slightly more personal survivability. The main issue with Mistweaver though is quite frankly the perception of them rather than their relative strength. As a result of these hotfixes, we'll be moving Mistweaver Monks up one tier from C to B, leaving our compiled 10.1.5 healer tier list looking like what you see on screen now. Preservation Evokers continue to be one of the best alternatives to Holy Paladin from a pure healing standpoint, but the fact that you're essentially forced into running double Evoker causes them to lose considerable value, resulting in them being far less represented than they otherwise should be, which can be said for a lot of specs. The rest of the healer tier list remains fairly balanced, disciplined priests since their atonement buffs have been performing slightly better, but still not enough to warrant them moving up any higher on the tier list just yet. 
Holy Priest, on the other hand, still ends up being on the weaker end of the healers as it stands, despite receiving some buffs to the damage of Holy Nova through the Rhapsody talent, which along with Imperial Blaze now being far more accessible, has left them a lot more competitive on the damage front. But again, we don't expect the healer meta to change all that much until we see further tuning put in place. Before we wrap things up, we want to hear from you. We're currently working alongside some of the best players in the world to develop high quality guides for Mythic Plus. With that in mind, what topics would you like us to cover next? Do you have any specific pain points you'd like help with? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video and want to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified the second we release any new content. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.